You've probably heard about cryptocurrencies. Maybe you've seen some guru on YouTube trying to sell you a course on how to become a millionaire with Bitcoin. Or perhaps you have a friend who won't stop talking about the new meme coin. The point is, everyone's talking about crypto. For some, they're just a giant scam, while for others, they represent the future of money. In this video, I'll break down everything you need to know, so you'll have a clear picture of how the crypto world actually works. Part 1. The Real Problem with Money Cryptocurrencies were created to solve a problem with how we transfer money today. When you send money through a bank, the money doesn't go directly from you to the other person. There's always a middleman, the bank, that checks, authorizes, and records the transaction. Bitcoin was created specifically to remove this middleman, so you can send money directly from person to person without anyone in the middle being able to block you. It's like sending a text. You write it, send it, and it goes straight to the recipient. All of this was first described in 2009 in a paper signed by Satoshi Nakamoto, a pseudonym that still hides a mysterious person or group to this day. The document laid out the vision of a digital money system protected by math and computer science, not by trust in a bank or government. But how on earth does all of this work without banks? Part 2. How does cryptocurrency work? To make this system work without intermediaries, crypto uses a technology called blockchain. The name sounds complicated, but the idea is actually very simple if you picture it the right way. Think of a shared Google Doc where everyone has the exact same copy and can see every transaction in real time. If you send one Bitcoin to your friend, that transaction gets broadcast to thousands of computers around the world. All these computers check it together, and if everything looks good, they add it to their own personal record. If you try to change it, your copy no longer matches everyone else's, and the network instantly catches you and kicks you out of the game. Each Google Doc is like a block in the blockchain, and that brings us to the chain part of blockchain. When this block is full, it gets added to the long chain of previous blocks. Every block is linked to the one before it with a unique code, so changing even a single transaction that's already recorded would mean rewriting every block that comes after it. That makes tampering practically impossible, because you'd need an insane amount of computing power. But who actually adds these blocks to the chain? That's where mining comes in. Computers compete to solve super complex math puzzles, and only the one that solves the puzzle first can add the block and earn a reward in cryptocurrency. So now you understand the technology. But why is Bitcoin worth $90,000 while some random coin is worth a fraction of a cent? And more importantly, why do prices change so much from one day to the next? That brings us to part 3. Price dynamics in the crypto market. Let's start with an important difference. When you buy a stock, you're buying a piece of a real company. That company has offices, employees, revenue, and the stock's value depends on how the company performs over time. With crypto, it's different. You're not buying a share of something. You're buying a digital asset whose value depends entirely on how much people are willing to pay for it. In practice, pure supply and demand. If more people want to buy than sell, price goes up. If more people want to sell than buy, price goes down. The market decides in real time, and cryptocurrency markets are incredibly volatile and speculative. Bad news, like a country banning mining, can make them crash in a few days. Good news, like the approval of a Bitcoin ETF, can make prices explode in a few weeks. This happens because most people don't buy crypto to use it, but to speculate. They buy hoping nice. the price will go up, and they sell as soon as they're afraid it'll drop. Let me give you some numbers so you understand what we're talking about. Bitcoin in 2016 was worth around $500. In November 2021, it hit $69,000. Anyone who held on for five years saw a 13,700% gain. But the story doesn't end there. From that peak of $69,000, Bitcoin crashed to $16,000 in just 12 months. A 77% loss. This is what is meant by volatility. The stock market swings on average 15% a year. Bitcoin swings 60%, four times as much. Part 4. Types of Crypto not all cryptos are the same. Bitcoin is considered digital gold. It was the first cryptocurrency and has the strongest network security. People don't really use Bitcoin to buy a pizza, although back in 2010, yes, a pretty expensive pizza. 
Today, Bitcoin is used as a store of value. It has a fixed supply of 21 million coins that will ever exist. To date, about 19 million have been created, so only 2 million remain to be mined over the coming decades. No one can change this limit, even if they wanted to, because it's written into the very code that governs the network. Then there are altcoins, created to solve specific problems or offer features that Bitcoin doesn't have. For example, Solana aims to be super fast with transactions. These projects can have great potential, but they're also riskier than Bitcoin because they're often younger and less established. Stablecoins, on the other hand, are designed to eliminate the volatility typical of traditional crypto by pegging their value to a reference asset, like the US dollar and the euro. Tether, which is the largest stablecoin by market cap, works like this. For every coin that exists, there should be a real dollar in a bank somewhere. In theory, they always maintain a one-to-one -one value, but not all stablecoins are created equal. Terra and Luna, for example, were algorithmic stablecoins that collapsed spectacularly, wiping out $40 billion in value. If a stablecoin isn't backed by real assets, it's a ticking time bomb. And then we have meme coins and shit coins. These are cryptocurrencies born as jokes or internet memes with no real technology behind them. Dogecoin started as a parody of Bitcoin with a Shiba Inu dog and took off thanks to Elon Musk's tweets. Then there are things like Pepe coin or Safe Moon created only to ride the hype on social media. The pattern is always the same. The price explodes if they go viral on TikTok or Reddit, then crashes just as quickly when the attention fades. If we look at market cap, you calculate it by multiplying the price of one coin by how many coins exist. The entire crypto market hit an all-time high of $4.35 trillion in 2025. Bitcoin dominates with around 58% followed by Ethereum. Everything else fights for the remaining share. This shows which projects have staying power versus just hype. But now comes the question that really matters. Is it worth getting into this world? Part 5. Pros and Cons of Cryptocurrency Now that you know the different types of crypto, it's time to look at the pros and cons of this technology, so you can get a real picture before putting even a single dollar in. Let's start with the advantages. First, they're 100% decentralized. No government or central bank can freeze your funds overnight or devalue everything by printing infinite money, like Argentina has done in recent years, with annual inflation over 200%. Second, total global accessibility. All you need is a smartphone and internet to get in the game, with no paperwork to sign or hours spent at a bank opening an account. Third, very low costs. You can send money to the other side of the world in minutes, paying low fees compared to traditional banks. And fourth, privacy. Contrary to what you might think, cryptos like Bitcoin aren't 100% anonymous, but we can call them pseudo-anonymous. This means your personal data isn't directly linked to wallet addresses, but all transactions are public on the blockchain. And blockchain analysis companies can easily trace transactions on the public blockchain, link addresses to your personal data, and create a complete history of all your transactions. To get around this problem, there are special cryptocurrencies called privacy coins, like Monero, that hide the sender's identity, the recipient's identity, and the transaction amount. The downsides, though, are just as significant extreme volatility. Prices can crash 20 to 50% in a few days, and what was a gain becomes a loss in an instant. Bruh. Regulatory uncertainty. The rules of the game are constantly changing. Governments can introduce new taxes on crypto transactions, completely changing the profitability of your investments. Zero consumer protection. With crypto, you're completely responsible for everything that happens. There's no undo button. This means if you send Bitcoin to the wrong address, that money is gone forever. And fourth, they're barely used in practice. There are 659 million people who own crypto, but only 15,000 stores worldwide accept them as payment. Part 6. Where to buy them To enter the world of cryptocurrencies, the first essential step is an exchange, the digital platform where you deposit regular money and convert it into crypto. There are tons of them online, and they fall into two main categories. Centralized exchanges are regulated platforms with a simple interface, but they can fail, like what happened with FTX in 2022, get hacked, or freeze accounts. And decentralized exchanges have no intermediary. Everything runs on blockchain. They're more 
secure, but require you to already have a pre-existing wallet and some experience. Part 7. Who actually makes money in crypto industry? To answer this question, I've created a pyramid that shows how the crypto industry works in terms of who profits. At the top are exchanges like Binance and Coinbase, which generate 15 to 20 billion dollars annually in fees. They make money on every transaction, whether the market goes up or down. Below them are founders who control 15 to 40 percent of tokens from launch at near zero cost. Then come venture capitalists and institutional investors. They get in during private funding rounds at prices 10 to 100 times cheaper than retail investors, then exit when the price rises. Next are industrial mining farms, generating 10 to 11 billion dollars annually. These massive operations have economies of scale that individual miners cannot compete with. Influencers and crypto gurus rank next. They profit from courses and promotions, not from actual trading. At the bottom sits the retail investors, who are often driven by emotional decisions, and studies show that around 90% of them end up losing money. So, if you do decide to get in, you need to understand exactly what you're doing and the odds you're facing. When it comes to investing, follow these five fundamental rules. Only invest what you can afford to lose. Allocate a maximum of 1-5% to of your overall portfolio to crypto. Invest fixed amounts at regular intervals to reduce volatility risk. Don't chase the hype or blindly trust advice from influencers. Think of crypto investment as a bet, similar to high-risk gambling. Part 8. Types of Cryptocurrency Investments There are four main approaches to cryptocurrency investing. The first is short-term trading. You buy and sell cryptocurrencies in a short time frame to take advantage of rapid price changes. The goal is to get in when the price is low and get out when it rises, making frequent profits. It's risky, stressful, and requires time and market knowledge. Long-term investing, on the other hand, is a different approach. If you're thinking in terms of years, short-term fluctuations worry you less. Consider that Ethereum, launched in 2015, has increased by over 100,000%. Sure, it had crazy swings in the short term, but anyone who treated it as a long-term investment gained enormously. Then we have mining. Mining is the process through which new cryptocurrencies are created and transactions on the blockchain are verified. The problem is that today, Bitcoin mining requires specialized hardware called ASIC that costs thousands of dollars and consume enormous amounts of energy. And staking. Staking works by locking your cryptocurrencies in a wallet to support the security of the blockchain network. In return, you receive periodic rewards depending on the crypto you choose. Whatever the method, the risk of losing capital is high. I'm telling you this because I've lost money too. Plus, keep in mind that the crypto space is full of scammers because it's largely unregulated and irreversible transactions make it a perfect hunting ground. So if someone promises you high or guaranteed returns, tries to create artificial urgency to push you to buy, or if you discover that the founders control the majority of tokens, it's probably a scam. Avoid throwing away money, trust me. Part 9. Wallets and Security when you move from theory to actually holding crypto, the wallet becomes the most important thing you need to understand. But what does it actually mean to have a crypto wallet? A wallet is a device that allows you to keep safe the cryptographic keys to access and control your funds on the blockchain. The first key is the public key, which works like your bank account number that you share to receive money, and the private key, which is your secret password and needs to be protected like treasure. There are two main types of wallets. Hot wallets, meaning online, very convenient and fast for trading with small amounts, but more exposed to hacking attempts, and cold wallets, physical devices like Ledger that cost a few dollars but offer maximum security because they stay offline. The dark side is that if you lose the hardware, goodbye crypto. Oh, not good. In 2013, a guy lost 8,000 Bitcoin, about $800 million, by accidentally throwing away a hard drive. These episodes show us that in the crypto world, to maintain security, you need to know how to protect your wallets and guard your keys with extreme care. Part 10. The Future of Cryptocurrencies The global cryptocurrency market hit $5.7 billion in 2024, and analysts expect it to double to $11.7 billion by 2030. But the real shift is institutional involvement. 
For years, pension funds and traditional investors wanted exposure to Bitcoin but couldn't. When BlackRock, the world's largest institutional investor, launched their Bitcoin ETF in January 2024, it shattered every record. Within 341 days, it accumulated $70 billion in assets, making it the fastest growing ETF in history. By finally giving regulated access to players who previously couldn't get in. Also, major banks are integrating cryptocurrencies into their systems, suggesting the industry will continue evolving as a foundational layer of future finance. However, like any emerging asset, crypto remains volatile and carries risks. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and let me know in the comments what you think about cryptocurrencies. Bye.